We will go right to the phones for Ready Matt. You're calling from a 610 area code. Who are you? Where are you calling from? Hey, is this me? Yeah, it's you. Hey, Michael. This is uh, D from New York. Hey, D. What's going on? Hey, I just wanted to uh, gauge your thoughts on a couple of things. You uh, mentioned uh, that part of your issue with Elon Musk is that you feel that his level of essentially wealth is unacceptable to you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's fair. So, mm-hmm. so um, what is your position on like a maximum wage? Because I, I know support a maximum um, wage. Yes, I do. What do you have like a specific number that you support? Because I don't. Like I don't have a specific or- number in mind. To be honest with you, I would just say if you want to keep it really simple for purposes of this conversation, you can't sure. have. Uh, billionaires in uh, out is, is antithetical to democracy. Anybody handling that level of wealth in the private discretion okay. and the private whims of any individual is a threat <laughs> to democratic process. And I'll, you know, and, and even if they are using their money well, that level of complete lack of accountability. I, I, this is not even the main point. But there was a, I forget what show it was. There was an NPR show several months ago where they did a look into just the sort of personal lives of people at that level of affluence. And they reported it to some extent. Right. And it's like, you're talking about, I mean, just even imagine like flying into a country in a private jet and then being like, oh, we forgot our passports. Oh, it's all right. We'll just call ahead. Like there, there is no both what you literally can do materially to influence politics and also just your psychological makeup is it's just uh, it's it's unsafe and bad for democracy even if you are like a, a you know a, a good person with good intentions it's not it's not particularly personalized for me i mean elon musk happens to have built a ludicrous brand for himself which makes him sort of distinctly obnoxious and like somebody that if people can listen and calm down and hear the critique hopefully they can get out of worshiping him but uh so you don't hate you don't hate all of them necessarily it's really not about i you know i don't have a personalized view of politics i'm a polemicist at times and i make fun of people and there's some people that i think certainly deserve contempt but it's not about uh it, it, it it's it's a function not a personality Oh, yeah, that that definitely makes sense. I w- yeah. I would just add, like, I think you don't approach this as just the income tax. I think, one, the first thing you go at is inheritance. Like, I think sure. in, inheritance in, is is just a way to compound, like, you know, un, uh, ill-got gains, probably. Like, you think about, like, the Trump family. Even if they are, like, well won, nobody should be in, able to inherit, like, that much money uh, right. compared to their relative right. people. And then right. you go at, like, I think you cap wealth. And then have just super high income taxes, like uh, progressive income taxes, maybe like ninety nine above like twenty million dollars or something like that. Yeah, so it's I like mean, basically you, nothing. But yeah, yeah, basically. I mean, if you did, if you're, if we're talking just within the realm of commonsensical, moderate social democratic solutions, even if we, you know, I, I, I think that there is a, a definitely a broader conversation to be had about right. the amount of things that we decommodify and take out of private hands. And by the way, you could still have certain private and market activity that would be so radically downscaled that you would just be talking about really a a very a different type of interdependent economy which has not even necessarily been practiced before but if you want to just leave it at that what within the context of our system or uh, just moderate updated social democracy that would deal with the kind of problems that as this example thomas piketty put forward uh yeah you would you would get rid of and tax and, and, and all forms of wealth, whether they be inheritance or property ownership, you know, rent, rentism and inheritance uh, are, again, they're also fundamental. They're bad for democracy. They're also not great even from a market perspective because they don't really incentivize that much, you know, the, the sort of positive side, right? Like innovation, product development or solving right. problems. You're just like sitting on what you've already usually has just been given to you. Yeah, they're pro-aristocracy, yeah. pro-market. Really. I mean, that's the other thing, too. When you get into libertarian stuff and the logic of markets, you're really talking about a f- certain form of feudalism. 
uh, even more so than markets in many respects. And the thing with Elon Musk is you take all of these structural things, which I wish people could talk about instead of looking for a billionaire to save them, which is the big structural problem. And then you get specifically with this guy and it's like, I mean, it's just all hat and no cattle, right? Like Tesla's a cool car that ain't solving global warming. Some rich people in LA having a car that might lay it on fire is not solving a it was structure. government subsidized. And it was government sub well, that's the other major thing. A guy is a, he's a government contractor, which I don't have any beef with, but like even you just should own the, it and be proud of right, it. Right, own it and be proud it proud of it. And then he's also militantly anti union. So you combine the fact that the innate reality of billionaires is a problem, even if they're the most enlightened people. Even if Gandhi was a billionaire, it shouldn't be. Right. Uh, And right. then you combine that with the fact that he's selling and marketing a mythology of how to solve a crisis that even in the best case scenario, he can only play a supplementary role in unless you believe in a tech utopian uh, Panglossian worldview where this stuff will just solve itself through market innovation and technology, which if you still believe in 2018, I, you know, again, it's more analogous to figuring out why somebody would join Scientology than having a political conversation. Yeah. And then, exactly. you know, and then number three, the guy's, a, he's anti-union. <laughs> so uh, that's actually actively harmful of uh, dealing with the social problems we find ourselves in today. Uh, and then he makes himself a target by being a jackass on Twitter. So, yeah. <laughs> But I don't hate the guy. All right. Yeah, thanks, Michael. Yeah. Appreciate the call, man. That's going to go in the show. Thank you. Notes. Michael does not hate Elon Musk. I, I There's very few the people record. that I actually hate. I if, actually, I was to, if I was to think of like what that word actually means, t- tons of people I dislike. The po- <laughs> <laughs> Endless nuns of bounce of people. The podcast I had before starting that Majority Report that was just me and my friends, the second episode was called Wo- Won't Elon Now? <laughs> and uh, it was we were talking about the hyperloop, and but like my point was, and this is before he was sort of like publicly an idiot. He was still an idiot, and he had a lot of problems. But like right. my thing was, is I like to use him as a cudgel in sort of anti-libertarian arguments, right. like um, how a huge like third of a billion dollar loan basically saved Tesla during the financial downturn, and that's the sort of thing like story we need to be telling. Like that's how success happens um, right. often. Uh, and uh, but yeah, he's just an idiot. He's an asshole. And I mean, and it, but he's somebody, he's, he's a case study in a certain kind of problem and a certain type of false and dangerous belief. And again, it's, it's analogous to why I spend a lot of time on, you know, Sam Harris or Jordan Peterson in the in YouTube, essentially, I mean, in in the audiences we're dealing with, you're not going to find somebody who says, "How dare you critique the Koch brothers?" <laughs> right? Um, there's a much more broader understanding that a couple of inherited wealth petrochemical brothers dumping endless amounts of money to create, you know. Uh, they and absolutely in their case 21st century feudalism i mean it would be literally no other way of describing their political agenda and you know going out of their way with all of the resources they have had to try to make most of america poorer sicker and dumber most people in our milieu understand that the Koch brothers are a menace to society but there's a fair amount of people who say like what's wrong with elon musk he wants to go to space so we need to dissect it a bit more. Yeah. Um, I mean, he's basically just a receptacle for hope. <laughs> yes, and that and that actually is the most poignant part of it, and the mo- and the part that is actually like both the most profoundly depressing because it shows how like really impoverished people's sense of hope are. But on the other hand, it's like guys, like I'll let me try to do the positive version. I always say to people, and we mock people like. If you're defending Elon Musk, I think what was the line was like, if you're on Twitter defending Elon Musk, you should just upload your tweet to YouPorn as a cuck video because there truly is no more pathetic behavior than somebody like trying to defend a multi-billionaire in their social media feeds. And it's certainly Elon Musk wouldn't do, to his credit, he wouldn't do that for you. 
Like it's just really sad, pathetic. Behavior. Well, I don't know his his Twitter compulsion. Yeah, maybe he would. He yeah, is a weirdo. Exactly. You know, what? fair enough. Maybe he would. Um, but it wouldn't be his life. Let me flip it on the positive side and actually invite you to be like, hey, you can have hope in yourself. You can have hope in your community. Like, there are actually ways of solving problems that don't bank on an active fantasy life about an over-glorified government contractor. We can come together across countries, across continents, in communities, politically, and actually acquire power and solve real problems that make life better for everybody. This is achievable. If we didn't think this was achievable, we wouldn't be doing what we do. So the flip side of that pathetic Stanish behavior is have some self-confidence and have some sense of yourself and the community you're part of. Things can be achieved. Um.